This pumpkin is somewhat larger than the others in the patch. A patch of orange, healthy-looking pumpkins is growing in this secluded little area of the forest. You look for a nice, large pumpkin to take from the patch. Hey! Watch it! Oh, sorry. I was not aware you could talk. Likewise! Anyway, be careful where you're treading. You're spoiling the good soil by standing so close. And I got eight kids to feed. You glance at the smaller pumpkins. These must be her children. I only count seven. Yeah, well, I had eight. Then some strange man who spoke even stranger came by. He claimed to be a hort... a hort... a... a horticle... claimed to know a bit about plants. I let him take a look at my little darlings. Anyway, before I knew it, he'd gone and pinched one of my babies. Took off towards the town, he did. I saw the knife. Just because we're plants doesn't mean we don't deserve any respect. I am sure that is true. Pardon me for asking, but how did you come by the ability to talk? With a question like that, I might ask you the same. I was only... I don't take it poisonal. That old witch had to cast a spell on me so I could guide her precious possessions. Hagatha? Yeah, she's the old bag who lives in that cave to the west. You know her type. Green warts, pointed ears, cannibalistic, doesn't put her trash out. Just your stereotypical evil old crown. Hmm. <laughs> she sounds pleasant. You mentioned something about guarding Hagatha's precious possessions. At least, what she considers precious. I reckon they're anything but. Mind you, I have my doubts about Hagatha's legitimate ownership of this stuff, if you know what I mean. What sorts of items does Hagatha wish you to guard? Oh, uh, the usual vanities. All useless, in my opinion. But what would I know? The mother pumpkin looks distressed. You decide not to interrupt her at the moment. There is an enormous rock mound nearby. Vines and creepers run down it and twist through the cracks and crevices. Beneath the mound are some smaller stones. These plants have long branches with very fine leaves. To the north, you notice a little clearing near the back of a small cave. A lone palm tree sways slightly in the subdued breeze. You see a little girl wandering around the meadow. She wears a ruby red cloak and appears to be searching for something. Hello, who are you? My name is Graham. What is yours? Possum. That is what my grandma calls me. She is not at all well these days. I was collecting flowers for her, but now I cannot anymore. Why is that? My basket is missing. I have looked everywhere for it. It must be around here somewhere. I will keep my eye out for it. Thank you, Graham. Repressing the urge to burst into song, you choose instead to quietly admire the area. I was wondering, could you tell me anything about this land? You mean Kalima? There is a town to the northeast, and a church not far south of that. Grandma and I live in a house near the beach. You should not enter the swamp to the north. It is said to be influenced by magic. Many have easily lost their way in there, and finding your way out again is difficult. Thank you, Possum. Is there any way at all through the swamp? I do not know, but I did see someone walking out of there not long ago. He was writing something in a book as he walked. Who was that? A monk from the church. You mentioned that your grandma is not well. What ails her? 
I, I'm not sure, but I think it gives her sad dreams. While she sleeps, sometimes she talks out loud. Sometimes I listen to her. No, do not leave me, she says. At first, I thought she was speaking to me. I would go over to her, but she would not notice me. Then I realized it was a dream. I think she misses the person she talks to in her sleep. And then there's the scary dreams. You mentioned that your grandma had scary dreams. What are these dreams about? Bats. Bats? Yes, in her sleep, she screams with fright, as if a bat is chasing her, or she's being hurt by one. Then, she'll say something like, Blue light is the bat's true being, over and over. Blue light? What does she mean? I have asked her this, but she just shakes her head and will not speak of it. Thank you, Possum. I wish your grandma a swift recovery. Thank you, Graham. I will speak of you to her. As you near the cave, the bat symbol above the entrance starts radiating an ominous black glow.
You have run into an evil enchanter. You take the basket. You hand the basket to Possum. Thank you, kind sir. Please take this flower. I'm afraid it's all I have to give you. It is more than enough. I notice that you have picked only yellow flowers. Of course. Is it not customary for one to pick yellow flowers for another who is gravely ill? Certainly it is. I'm sorry to hear about your grandma, Possum. Thank you. Goodbye. 